what the mainstream media was afraid to tell you about the news this week. This week, while well, the mainstream media obsessed over Ben Carson and his Oreos, here are the things that happened that really matter. NPR tells journalists to stay away from certain terms, like pro-life and unborn baby. NPR says do not say those words and do not say late-term abortion, partial birth abortion, abortion clinic, abortion doctor, or pro-abortion either. In this new guidance dictate from NPR that resembles the newspeak in George Orwell's 1984, NPR says not to use the term unborn baby because, quote, the term unborn implies that there is a baby inside a pregnant woman, not a fetus. Babies are not babies until they're born. But did the mainstream media report this to you? Did they call out their own for bias and thought control and just political dishonesty masquerading as journalism? Nope. The mainstream media didn't say a word. A new report from McGuire Woods reveals that Virginia Governor Ralph Northam's medical school knew about Northam's blackface photo in the yearbook, and they actively hid the yearbook and the photo during several of Northam's campaigns for public office. Two different presidents of that medical school hid the photo, and both donated to Northam's campaigns. But did the mainstream media report on this, this willingness of leftists to brush racist behavior under the rug if the person acting racist is a leftist? Nope, the mainstream media was silent. Senator Kamala Harris says if she is president, she will fine private companies if they can't prove that the gender pay gap between their male and female employees is due to factors other than sexism. The companies will be fined 1% of their daily profit for every 1% gender pay gap under Harris's plan. Except research shows that the gender pay gap is not about sexism. It's due to the different choices men and women make in their lives and in their careers. From the college majors, women choose versus men, to the commute time to their jobs, the hours worked, the overtime, the business trips, and how much time off women take versus men. But did the mainstream media report the facts on the gender pay gap? Nope, the mainstream media doesn't care about the facts if the facts contradict the liberal narrative. A new DNA test pilot program in Texas revealed 30% of migrant families who were suspected of being frauds are unrelated to the children they brought with them. In addition, even more adults verbally admitted that the children weren't actually their children, nor were they stepchildren or adopted children, when immigration authorities threatened the DNA test. But did the mainstream media report on this, these migrant kids who are being trafficked? Nope. The mainstream media only pretends to care about migrant kids when it suits their political agenda. The SAT announced a new adversity score they will assign to each student who takes their test. This adversity score will have nothing to do with academic merit. Students will not be told how it's calculated or what their adversity score is, and students will have no way to appeal their score. But the SAT will send it to the colleges. Here's the kicker. This SAT adversity score will hurt Asian students the most because these are the standards of how the SAT will determine if you are privileged. The environment of your neighborhood, of your family, and of your high school. This includes crime rates, poverty rates, housing value, median income of the student's location, education level of parents, curriculum rigor at your high school, the free lunch rate at your school, and AP class opportunities. So in other words, this will disproportionately harm Asian families and Asian students. These minorities in the United States will be punished for being successful. But did the mainstream media report on this? Nope, the mainstream media was silent. The mainstream media doesn't care to report any of that to you. So we will. And that's my final point.